Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be going over the history of the Dardanian faction in RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6 Point five. This is taken from a longer interview video that I did with one of the historians for the mod team, Jottle. So check that out down in the description below. Make sure you like and subscribe, guys, and I'll see you all in the video. So here we are as the Dardanians, one of my favorites from the dev diaries in terms of their history. So where do we start with them? Um, yeah, the Dardanians are like one of the harder factions to figure out, which is kind of weird because they are really prominent in the sources, yeah. um, but but never in detail. Like you, in, in every source you get um, Dardanian raids into Macedonia, and um, it really starts with Philip. Like the name of the Dardanians already appears quite early on in Homea, in the, in the Trojan Wars, but they are probably not the same Dardanians. Um, they're very likely not the same Dardanians. And um, so, really, as a people, they first appear as enemies of Philip, um, Philip II of Macedon, after he takes out the Paeonians and the Illyrians and the Thracians. So, after he takes out Paeonia, he suddenly neighbors the Dardanians. And it's, the sources are not really, don't really agree on that. Um, some say he attacked them without provocation, some say they endanger Macedon. Um, they are, at the very least, um, somewhat Illyrian, but also a lot, um, very much their own thing. Um, the sources rarely call them just Illyrians, um, mm. a mistake scholarship has often done in the past, that um, they, for example, often assume that um, that Mununius, um, we just talked about, is a Dardanian king. Yeah. Um, because later on there is an actual Dardanian king called Mununius, and they think it's um, um, it's just a Dardanian name, but it's just an Illyrian name, and the Dardanians take on Illyrian names for for their own royalty. Um, but they are very much their own thing. They um, sit like, as you see, um, to the north of um, the Paeonians. Um, we have lots of hill forts in what is assumed that um, to be their territory, and um, later on more cities in the valleys. Like um, you see that they have a lot of mountainous and hilly regions yeah. where they first have their forts, and then they come down to the um, valleys, which is probably a sign that they start to unite more. Um, so fast forward, Philip, um, Philip defeats them, he subdues them, but he doesn't really conquer them because that's not really an area he cares about. I think he just <laughs> wanted to show them that they don't, that they shouldn't mess with him. Yeah. And they don't, they don't um, mess with Alexander either, either. Um, even when he goes for the Triballoi in the north, um, there was sometimes the assumption that he had to go um, through Dardania, but he didn't. Um, there was. Uh, during an era where no one was quite sure where all the peoples are, like where are the Tribaloi, where are the Skodiskoi, where are the Dadanoi. Um, so yeah, they, they keep a low profile, as you also said in your video. And um, they really start bothering the Macedonians um, when the sources focus again on them um, in the later 3rd century BC with Philip V, which I, yeah. uh, who I previously mentioned. And um, they constantly start raiding Macedon. Like every time the army is away, they have an army in the in, in the <laughs> fields of Macedon. Um, oh, oh, I guess it starts out somewhat earlier um, because we get this Celtic invasion. Um, I don't know if it has been mentioned before. This great Celtic invasion of Delphi in um, 280 BC. Um, it's for, for the Greeks. It's a real catastrophe. Um, like there is this huge Gallic host of of these these bearded um, stereo, uh, stereotypes, of course, of these bearded guys who just enter Greece and want to pillage everything. Um, and um, of course, the Celts were somewhat known before, but um, the Greeks were really afraid of them. And um, 
the, it was a really bad timing for the Greeks because Macedon was in the middle of a civil war with Ptolemy Keraunos, who I previously mentioned. Um, because now, now it gets complicated. <laughs> you have this battle that I mentioned with Lysimachos and Seleucus who fight each other. Yeah. Lysimachos at the time is the king of Macedon and Thrace and Seleucus of the Seleucid Empire. Yeah. Um, they both are nearly 80 years old. Um, Seleucus beats Lysimachos, he dies. And then he is like, okay, I'm the true heir of Alexander now. I can enter my kingdom. And he crosses over into Europe, into his new Macedonian, Thracian, Seleucid Empire. And he gets killed by Ptolemy Kiraunos, yeah. who is in his retinue. Um, who gets the name Kiraunos, Thunderbolt, because of this action, because he, he acts so aggressively and quickly. Um, so Kiraunos is now the king of Seleucia and Thrace and Macedon, but because of this whole chaos, it's already kind of crumbling around him. Um, and yeah, there is also Pyrrhus, who supports him somewhat, but also doesn't. There's Demetrios and his son Antigonos, and it's a big brawl in Macedon. <laughs> and in the middle of that, the Celts in the lead. Um, Maybe they were even on the side of someone in, in this in this whole um, conflict. We don't really know. And um, because of that, because it's such a big threat, um, the Dardanian king comes to Ptolemy Keraunos and is like, okay, here's a deal. I give you 20,000 men and you beat off this Celtic invasion. Um, because, of course, it was also threatening the Thracians, the Paeonians, the Dardanians. And Keraunos is, no, is like, no, uh, screw you. I can do it on my own. Then he dies. <laughs> <laughs> um, he dies in battle against the Celts. They proceed to Delphi and sack it, and then they get beaten by a Greek alliance. And then a few remnants of the Celts go back through Dardanian territory, and the Dardanians finish them off. Um, they probably come out of it relatively unscathed, like Thrace is destroyed. Um, Macedon and Greece are, uh, or central Greece, are pretty wrecked. By this invasion and Dardania is probably okay-ish. <laughs> yeah. Relatively. And um, that's kind of where they enter this um, enter Greece as a major player and um, start threatening Macedon every time the border gets insecure. They often go through Bilazora, um, which is in Paeonia. Um, this is their path into Macedon. Like we have the Dasaretes as a border region against Illyria. And Paeonia as a border region against the Dardanians. Um, so a lot of fighting happens around this region against the Dardanians. When Antigonos Doson fights against Sparta at Delasia, which I previously mentioned, um, he is away from Macedon, so the Dardanians invade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which then always happens. So he returns and they flee. Um, and um, the interesting thing about this about this is um, that they often take a lot of prisoners um, and scholars have somewhat compared them to Sparta in a way mm. in that they ba probably base a huge part of the economy off of slaves um, I think it is Atinaios who even says that um, there are a thousand slaves per Dardanian wow. which has scholars doubting it yeah <laughs> i mean <laughs> how do you want to keep so many slaves um what could be more likely is that it's kind of proto-feudal um mm. in, in the way that it's not slaves but more like um Serves. what do you say serfs right yeah. and um because they get recruited for battle so um they get they get indeed armed for campaigns and um I think the source even said they get put into companies, so in, into like what I previously mentioned that the Illyrians often have like formations of, of infantry, the Dardanians seem to have that too. Yeah. Um, and we get in a, even in a later episode with Philip, um, when they invade again, <laughs> um, in, in the Second Macedonian War, um, the Romans use the Dardanian um, pillaging to their advantage and just let them roam free in Macedon. And um, Philip splits up 
uh, splits up his forces and um, as the Dardanian host followed by cavalry and light infantry. And Livy says that um, they don't have really anything to answer. They are very infantry-based culture, mm. um, a very heavy infantry-based culture. Um, so they can't really do anything against um, the light infantry and the cavalry. But they also don't really take a lot of losses. Um, Livy emphasizes that their discipline formation um, keeps them from, from losing a lot of men. They get a lot of wounded, but not a single man is taken prisoner um, because they they are disciplined enough to not break and rout, but they yeah. they probably just take their wounded with them and, and hold the formation on their retreat, um, which is kind of pretty impressive. And we gave them um, a nice uh, speculative unit, um, the Dardanian pikemen. I think they're probably somewhat further down the line. Yeah, that was probably after. Oh, no, uh, they're, yeah, they're after reforms. Yeah, they're, they're a reform unit. Um, they are probably one of the more uh, speculative units we have for the Illyrians. Um, because the pikemen, um, we have a dedication at the, um, I think it's a sanctuary at Lindos um, from. King Philip of Macedon. We don't know which Philip. It's probably Philip V. And a paper also wrote, the inscription is hard to read. It's probably the, the Dardanians, but the other enemy is not really known. Um, mm. It's usually assumed to be the Maidoi, uh, the Medi, the, the Thracian Medi. Yeah. Um, but uh, we, we're not really sure. But it's most likely the, the Dardanians who are the first enemy. And... Um, he, he gifts um, 10 pikes, 10 pelter shields, and 10 helmets to the sanctuary. Um, and these gifts are usually taken from enemies, so we kind of based off a, um, a speculative pike unit of that. Because they have this discipl these disciplined formations, and because of this inscription. Um, so yeah, and you can have a lot of fun then when you play Dardania, you have something to look forward to. Yeah. Um, so you have a king and... We just assume he takes a bit of Paeonia and Macedon and now borders the Macedonians so he gets mm. an upgrade to his army. Um, so yeah, uh, but that's why they don't really have a lot of skirmishes and not really good cavalry because um, the sources don't really tell us that they have any. <laughs> yeah, and this guy, this guy Beto the Mean, Barto the Mean, he, he, he definitely has earned his name. He despises everyone. He despises Liburnians. He despises Histrians. Despises Iopodes. Abhors <laughs> Labeateans. Hates Macedonians. He just hates everyone. He's like, nope. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I hadn't seen that, but that must be an inside joke. Um, <laughs> because we were figuring out the, the diplomacy and I got constantly asked, like... Um, are they allies to anyone? Are they friends with anyone? And I was like, no, not really. I think nobody really likes them. <laughs> um, we, we have them fight a lot against the Celts, probably, because mm. they somewhat expand into the Scottiski territory, but the Scottiski also, at one point later, like way later, subjugate, probably subjugate the Dardanians mm. um, and force them with them on their campaigns. Um, they, pro they probably fight the Thracians a lot because they do the same things to the Thracians earlier um, that they cooperate on campaigns with them and probably yeah. force them to and um, yeah so they fight the Thracians, they fight the Paeonians, they fight the Macedonians they fight the Celts um, they're also really a little bit at conflict with the Illyrians, like with Queen Teuta you have a lot of Illyrians switching sides to the Dardanians when they get beaten by the Romans yeah uh, I mean, the, when the Illyrians get beaten by the Romans, a lot of them switch sides to the Dardanians. Um, so yeah, they are kind of at odds with everyone and um, only have like really, really temporary, temporary alliances. Mm. Um, so I uh, guess that was the result of it. And they and their sort of downfall is because of the Bastani, right? Being invited across. I can't remember exactly which Macedonian king it was who. It, uh, invited them and they raided the land right and then you know they never could really build up the strength again yeah it's Philip it's Philip V he, Fifth, he is yeah. also a real it's also a really long king because he fights like the first Macedonian war 
by Rome is not really involved yet because they have um, they are occupied with Hannibal, mm. and um, but Philip doesn't really come to help him, um, and so the first war he really fights against the Romans is the second one, and um, there it's there where the Romans um, use the Illyrians and the Dardanians um, as allies against him, and um, kind of let them roam free into Macedonia through the Dasaretes and through Paeonia. And um, Philip tries a lot of ways to to have them not do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, he and um, his son Perseus, they um, kind of destroy the, um, I think it's, um, it's some mountain. <laughs> um, around Mount uh, something something um, they devastate the land so the Dardanians don't really have an easy way to get through Yeah. Um, and um, probably because there they can't supply their troops when they're on campaign and um, another trick he has up his sleeves is the arrival of the Bastane yeah. um, kind of Alto-Germanic people question mark <laughs> um, who arrive in the Balkans and um, they send delegates to to the Greeks, to the Macedonians um, and he's like, yes come please, I, I have a perfect <laughs> land for you, it's it's just there, yeah. <laughs> go and get it and um, so the Bastane have like this, this huge migrating force which is um, probably as you can see quite usual for the Celts and Germanics yeah. and um, they invade Dardania. Sadly, this this piece of the source is only fragmentary. It seems they beat the Dardanians in battle quite decisively. Um, then the the source kind of breaks off, so we don't know what happens after. And it really comes back when we hear that the Bastane were on their were on their way back and crossed an, uh, a frozen river and all br broke into the river and all drowned. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Um, but yeah, they um, they really must have written Dardania. Dardania has, has like several delegations to the Romans and to other Greeks begging for help um, against this unfairness of, of having Bastane in their lands. And um, they don't, they aren't really a considerable foe after that. So the Romans have like some problems with them. They um, they become a minor nuisance once Rome gets Macedonia. Because, well, Ardania likes to invade Macedon, and now yeah. it's just Macedon with Rome stamped on top. So <laughs> they still, inv they technically still invade the same territory, um, but with the help of the Thracian Maidoi and the Dentelete, and um, later, I think the Skordiski or Skordiskoi um, kind of forced them um, also into, into invading uh, Macedon and Greece. And I think they also get to Delphi uh, a second time or a third time even I think Delphi gets gets pillaged a lot in this time <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah so um, I think they're really last notable as an enemy of Rome against Sulla um, in the Mithridatic Wars because um, like almost all the Thracians allied to uh, Mithridates and um, also also the Dardanians and um, Rome has like several campaigns into Thrace and a really decisive one into Dardania where they just take it and yeah. are, are done with it. <laughs> and so but by the time we get to, to Strabo, um, he writes um, really with a lot of disdain, um, basically that they live in dung caves and that <laughs> they... Um, um, Strabo, Strabo, really wild. Strabo loved absolutely slating everyone else, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he, he says they're wild, they dig caves beneath their dung hills and live <laughs> there. Um, but at least they still care for music because they make beautiful instruments, um, both flutes and stringed instruments. So at least they have that. <laughs> Good for acoustics, the caves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, may maybe the acoustic is really great uh, in this case. <laughs> no, I'm uh, he's, he, uh, he's uh, probably also um, 
probably just has a lot of disdain and stereotypes about them. Um, they are probably quite impoverished um, thanks to the Romans. Mm. Um, but um, we can't really say for sure. It's, it becomes a notable re region again in Byzantine times, I think, but that's not really my area. Yeah. No, cool. Really cool. One, one, one question then on, on these guys. You said that they were kind of lumped in as Illyrians by the uh, by Romans and Greeks, uh, you know, in later sources. But what what would the other cultural element be? Would it be would it be Celts? Would it be Thracians? What what is the thought on their culture? Because obviously they they've got their separate culture here, haven't they? As Dardanian. Um, mm -hmm. Is it so? Are they expressly Illyrians, or, or or they have their own Illyrian culture, or are they? I mean, all cultures are amalgamations, right? But what I'm trying to say is, like, what's the other sort of thoughts on the on the other half of the culture? Um, it's really hard to say. Like later Romans just say, yeah, here are the Dardanians, they are an Illyrian people, mm. and um, because they they just lump them in. Um, I've read some scholarship and they're also not really decided on the matter because um, there are discussions of like this this broad um, super alluring culture that was then applied to lots of people and um, that got criticized a bit later um, and it was a question are they maybe a bit more Thracian but also not really because not even the Paeonians are purely Thracians. Even the Paeonians are kind of their own thing. Mm. The Tribaloi are kind of their own thing. The Dardanoi are that. Um, and I even read something about them being Musian, Darko Musian, um, Darko Muso, Illyrian. We, we don't really know. We can't really figure that yeah. out. They are kind of probably their own thing. Um, but I'm also not really too deep into this um, question of ethnicity because these things are quite hard to figure out and read into, especially if not all literature is um, is really easily translatable, let's yeah. say. <laughs> there we go, guys. Thank you very much for watching the video. Of course, you can check out the longer video down in the description below. Make sure you do like and subscribe, and I'll see you all again on the next video.